Ah, look, you are not giving Apple's pages enough credit for being the powerful word processor it actually is. You and I are going to fix that right now after one important piece of news. It's the winners of the 58 Keys 1,000th subscriber contest, courtesy of the very nice, very funny and really generous people at the Omni Group. Two people are about to get one of my absolute favourite writing apps, Omni Outliner. Not just Omni Outliner, they are both getting the full extra Omni Outliner Pro. And not only are they both getting the full extra Omni Outliner Pro, both winners are getting Omni Outliner Pro for the Mac and separately for the iPhone iPad. I told you, Omni Group has been very generous. Thanks, Omni. Thank you, Nyari Pierce at Omni. And the winners are Cara Luke and Pavlis. Cara, Pavlis, congratulations. You're going to be hearing uh, from the Omni Group directly very shortly, and I am so pleased for the two of you. I hope you both love Omni Outliner as much as I do. Actually, I hope everyone loves Omni Outliner as much as I do. The thing is, if you are anybody other than Cara and Pavlis, you're going to have to go to omnigroup.com and get the trial version to find out for yourself. But do, do. However, now, this other little writing app you might have heard of, Pages. Let's sort out Pages, the word process that does not get no respect. Hello, I'm William Gallagher, and this is 58 Keys, which, as ever, as always, is for writers like you and me who use Macs and iPhones and iPads, possibly too much. Do subscribe if you're a writer like that, because we've got so much to talk about to do with these things. This time, we're talking specifically about pages. I mean, you know, this is Apple's free word processor, but maybe because it's free, I really believe it's underappreciated by such a long way. And actually, certainly because it's Apple, there's a strong chance you may not know all it can do because Apple likes to hide things to make them appear simple. With Microsoft Word, for example, it's like you've got to study the manual before you can type a letter to somebody. And it throws every possible feature at you in its controls, its ribbons. Its... But you've got to study Word before you write anything. Whereas with Pages, Apple's figures, you're a writer. You just want to get on with it. So it presents the bare minimum of what you need in a word processor. Trouble is, it's then very easy to therefore think it hasn't got anything more than the bare minimum. Let me show you the way. Here are five tips for using pages. Um, I'm going to show them to you chiefly on a Mac, but actually everything works on an iPad version of pages too. So it's sometimes a slightly different button, that's all. Uh, let me just say, these five tips, they kind of dart about a bit. And if they're in any order at all, it's the, the last one possibly a bit obscure. And all the way through, I'm going to sound like I am praising pages. And that, that is going to be because I am. But one of the tips does come with a health warning. You can do it. You can do it in pages. But you would be infinitely better off not. If you need to know how many words you've written, then it tends to be that you really need to know. You're writing to a word count that you've been given. Just go to the View menu on the Mac and choose Show Word Count. On iPad, slightly harder to find, tap the top left icon next to the word Documents and then tap to turn on Word Count. So far, so ordinary. And if you haven't found Show Word Count option, especially in the Mac, I think it's got to be because you haven't really been that bothered enough to look yet. You get around to it at some point in the future. It is that easy to find. It's harder on the iPad, I grant you. But once you have found it, you can then easily miss that there's actually more you can do, more than count the words in a word count, such as move the word count around. I do this a lot because it always ends up in the way for me on, on the Mac, floating at the bottom of the screen, and somehow always over the very words I'm trying to write. But as well as moving to anywhere you like, whenever you like, you can also change what it counts. On either Mac or iPad, click or tap on the word count itself, and you can change it to show instead of words, the number of paragraphs, if you like, the number of pages that can be useful, and so on. If you have come to pages from Word, as so many of us have, then there's a decent chance you've also come recently from 
pulling your hair out trying to find a headers and footers menu option button anything simplest thing simplest version click at the top or the bottom of the document on screen and you will see three boxes it can take get, getting used to finding just the right spot at the top or bottom to click or tap but if that is driving you to drink you could first just choose the view menu then show layout and the boxes will appear all the time the three boxes are for the left right left right and middle of where you want your header so you know your page count your title whatever it is to appear if you want it on the left right or middle yeah pick your box and same with the footer page count is special by the way Spe and special and so common that it's also easy click in any one of those three boxes of the header or any one of the three boxes in the footer and you'll immediately get a insert page number button click or tap on that and you get the typical possibilities for page numbering a document you know whether you you just want the number one or you want one of 99 whatever it is i don't know actually of any way to have the page count in both the header and the footer and sometimes you do once you've tapped in any of those three boxes at the top or the bottom and chosen to put a page number in it then when you click in any of the rest of them you no longer get that prompt to insert a page number again if you're coming from Word, the answer is yes. Pages has styles, knock yourself out. Look, I, I know this is possibly just me, but we all have things we, we struggle to grasp, and in me, in word processing, it was styles. You may not fathom why that was, and now that I get styles, I don't know how I didn't always, except that's a tell a lie I do. I first encountered styles on Microsoft Word for DOS, could not understand it at all. But then I was required to use WordPerfect for DOS for it for a bit for some reason. And somehow there, I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense now. I get it. And once you get it, you've got it. Let me make sure though that we're kind of on the same page, page here about what styles can be useful for, if you've ever used them, before I show you how to use them in pages, okay? The chapter of your book, right? It has a title in a certain format, a certain size font or bold or a or that kind of thing. Uh, so do the headings and the main text, the body text, that has a certain format as well. Each of those is different, or at least it can be if you want them to. What styles does is say, right, got it. Chapter heading is uh, what, this font, uh, this size, okay, and, and body copies, that, that, right, anytime, right, understood. If you write your book, and as you do that, as you go along, do this. Say uh, the thing I'm typing. This is a title. This is body text. Then Pages knows which is which, which is nice. But the benefit is this: today I want my chapter titles, all of them, to be Times Roman, 15 point, bold and italic and underlined. Tomorrow I find out my editor requires a whole manuscript to be in Helvetica with the titles 16 point and William don't ever underline anything ever again. With styles, I say, okay, tell pages. I want chapter and headings and body text to change to this, this, and this. And it does immediately, all of it, straight away, often as you like, back and forth, any change, any time. If you've used styles as you wrote, as you typed through the first way. If you first write the book and then want to add styles to it, you have to go back through the entire manuscript, selecting each chapter title, uh, each heading, each paragraph. And then saying, this is a paragraph, this is a, yeah, you're never going to do it. But you might well use styles as you write, particularly in long documents. And if you do, you get this great benefit of being able to change everything whenever you want. Plus, some typesetting software and some online content management systems, some of them, will pick up that this is a chapter title, this is body copy, and they'll do something with that information. So, here's how you do it as you write. Type, I am a chapter title, or whatever, and then highlight it. Um, if it isn't already clicked, click on the Format button at the top, the paintbrush uh, top right. It probably defaults to saying body in a box at the top. Click on body or whatever it says in that top box, and then choose title from the drop down. Instantly, your highlighted text is a chapter title. That's using the defaults, the default fonts and sizes that come with pages. If you don't like them, change them. Select the text again and from that same format menu now choose italic if you like or change the font. Uh, click on that cog to get more precise options or just you know mess around with the color. Whenever you're done 
Notice that title in the top box has changed. It's changed to match your choices with italic and colors and things. Plus, it has an asterisk and the word update. The asterisk is pages warning you that you have changed the title style or whichever one it is. And the update button is how you tell pages, yeah, so you want to make something of this? Click on update and from now on, your chapter titles, all of them, will all be as you've just set them in this document. If you want that to be uh, the same chapter style format for everything you write ever, I suppose, save this document now as a template and then just work from that in future. Much quicker tip this time, much easier. Don't outline in pages. Okay, there you go. Uh, look, many years ago now, back in the mists of time, pages did have a proper outlining feature and it was okay. Apparently, I can't remember that far back. Apple removed it for a polish, didn't put it back. They still haven't. Pages does not have an outliner. But you can make it look as if it does, if you've got to send an outline to an editor, for example. Click the Format button on the Mac, the paintbrush icon on iOS, choose Bullets and List, then pick Numbered. Now, as you write, each line is numbered one, two, three, and when you hit return, press tab to indent a line, then that line can get the ABC treatment. But you are just fooling yourself here. You know, it, Pages is still rubbish for reorganizing the lines and the thoughts you've written down. Just, just go get Omni Outliner instead, okay? Like our two winners did, yeah? They won for a reason. Omni Outliner, that's what you want. I'm conscious that I'm knocking Word quite a bit, and I can keep going on that. But actually, something Word is good at is cross-referencing. It's where you write a line, for example, about carrots or something, and can say afterwards, see page nine for more, right after. And then actually in an online document that you would be able to click on the words, you really could click on the words, see page nine for more, and go straight to, well, the ninth page. And what's particularly good in Word though is that if you later write some more and you add in a dozen pages, two dozen pages early on in your book, that old page nine might now become actually page 30 in the document and Word will know. It will change the text to say, see page 30 for more and clicking or tapping on the link would take you to page 30. Apple's pages can do pretty much the same thing. You need to start by setting up the place you want someone to go, the destination your reader will go to in your document. Go to that point in your document, click anywhere so you, anywhere you like it so you can you know, get the cursor in that section, then click the document icon at top right, just next to the format one. When that's open, click on bookmarks and then click on add bookmark. You can give your bookmark a name now if you like or, or later, but actually really you're done with this bit. Now you need to go to anywhere you like in the document, any one place or any many places over and over, that it would be useful for your reader to know that there is more carrot information in the world somewhere. Highlight some text that you want uh, the reader to tap on or click, then command or right click to bring up a, a context menu as it's called, choose add link. Choose from the list of bookmarks that you've created or notice that Pages is actually suggesting. It depends on the format of your document, whether it does or not, but if it has, there'll be a few there for you. There's no enter or okay button afterwards though. You choose the bookmark from that list of drop downs, and then what you do is you click or you tap away from the whole dialog box, just tap somewhere else on the page. That's it, dialog is dismissed and you're done. You've got a link to a point. You've got a cross reference to somewhere else in your document. There you go, five tips for using pages, including number four, buy Omni Outliner instead. One day I'm gonna shut up about that app, but it doesn't look like it's gonna to be today, does it? To be fair, I'm keen on a lot of apps and actually Pages is definitely one of them. Pages is far, far more powerful than we tend to give it credit for. I like that Apple does this, this thing of hiding the options so that they're not in your way, that you're a writer, you can just get on with the writing. That's what I want to do. I like that so much more than words. Look at me, look at me. I can do everything. Let me show you all of it in a row. It'd be good if more people knew just how much pages can do. In fact, actually, normally about now, I'd be saying, you know, go on, subscribe to 58 Keys, but just this once, how about you do this instead? Tell someone else how good Pages is, okay?
Of course, you are a writer. You can cope with more than one thing at a time. I'm not going to say no if you also want to subscribe to 58 Kiss. Thank you for watching this edition of 58 Kiss. Take care of yourself, eh? And I'll see you soon.